All right, today I wanted to share with you my experience mining Bitcoin, Ethereum, all that kind of nonsense on my Radeon 7 eGPU and AMD cards in general. I've been mining off and on just for a bit of fun to performance test the cards, that kind of stuff. And I went into my account and it had over $50 50 actual dollars and I just honestly I've, I've only ever mined at most maybe one day in the last few whatever and uh, Bitcoin it always goes up and it goes down and I guess it's a lot of nonsense for a lot of people but I've just been doing the maths and this Radeon 7 card if rates stay as they are today it can get you 800 USD a year 800 dollars a year just mining away so I thought that was uh, pretty crazy. I figured I'd just introduce what I've been doing in case anyone else wants to experiment in this thing. So um, I've been mining on an eGPU. So I had a Razer Core X Chroma with Radeon 7 plugged in. And uh, I threw all the stats on an Excel spreadsheet. And what you have to do when uh, considering mining, you got to know that the graphics cards, they use something called watts. What, 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 what? And that is units of electricity. And that actually costs you money because your electricity provider charges you for electricity. What is up with that? Of course, if you're a kid and you're mining on your parents' money, you probably don't care. And it's probably good that you do that because you get some sort of entrepreneurship in your belly. You know, you get that drive and you figure out the cost later. But just if you want to do this seriously, I guess you're not watching this video, but just factor that in. It's not free money. You get charged for it. But even for me, my cost per watt, is um, 19 cents for every thousand. So every kilowatt hour is 19 cents. So for me, it's 0.00019 per watt unit. And the Radeon 7, when it draws 250 watts of power, it earns me in today's rates about $2.2 a day. Whew, it's a lot of money. Compared that to the Vega 64, that guy earns at 320 watts, that guy gets me $1.15 a day. So I'm gonna go through this uh, spreadsheet and kind of explain to you in details, but pretty much, yeah, you can make some money just running these cards in the background. I'm using this platform called NiceHash, and what they do is they take a cut of the percentage you mine, you mine in pools, it's kind of like in gangs of computer, to work out all the different calculations. The application is open source, which is great, but they do use proprietary miners. And these miners, they have disclaimers on saying that they don't know the code for them. So these miners could be doing some dodgy things to your computer. Just be aware of that. <laughs> but that's the only application I could find that works with my Radeon 7 card. And this is working completely fine on Windows via an eGPU on a MacBook Pro. So I hope you enjoy this little throw around guide and experience of mining with an eGPU. Just finished benchmarking the Radeon 7 on mining and you can see that the Daga Hishamoto Claymore Dual Miner gets the most, that's 87 mega hashes a second and it's getting a Bitcoin score of 0.00018487 which is almost twice or at least 85% faster than the Vega 64. So we're currently drawing 250, 260 watts of power, the fans have gone straight up shooting up to 3000 revs per minute so it's very loud that's 2900 revs per minute and we're getting 88 mega hashes a second so i'm just going to auto undervolt this system and see if the car doesn't crash hit apply so we're getting 2.2 dollars at 250 watts and that's auto undervolt Gonna switch it back to manual and instead i'm gonna get the fan speed lower so i'm gonna go to 1400 apply and there you go we've dropped down to 180 watts and 180 watts we're getting 1.8 dollars a day and our mining score hash rate is 72 mega hashes a second so 180 watts on the Vega 64, we were getting $1 a day. However, on the Radeon 7, we're getting $1.8 a day. At this frequency, the fans have dropped from 3,000 revs per minute, and they've gone at the moment to 1,800 revs per minute. So not only do we have quieter operation, we have a better efficiency. Now I'm gonna drop the frequency even further 
to see the best efficiency for this card. So at 1,200, we're now mining at 60 mega hashes a second and we're pulling in 130 watts. The fans are going 1,010 revs per minute and this requires a frequency of 1,200, giving us mining targets of $1.43 a day at a hash rate of 60. All right, all the benchmarks have finished on the Vegas 64 and we can see that the highest we got is 0.000110 at 11871 and that's the Digger Hashimoto Plus Claymore Dual 14 nanometer plus miner. So let's see what kind of what kind of mining we can do on this guy. So we're currently mining one one dollar a day and that is costing us 240 watts of power and the fans are going 1450 so with the power limit set to plus 50 percent meaning we're using 320 watts on this vega 64 we're getting hash rate of around 26 mega hashes a second what i'm going to do now is i'm going to drop that power limit all the way down to minus 50 hit apply and i'll close this app down and restart it so now we're only pulling in, it's going to be 120 watts, 120 watts of power. And our hash speed is 16.9 mega hashes a second. Still giving us a good 0.74 USD a day. All right, so that was a lot to take in, but let me just break it down for you. So my Radeon 7 was managing between 130 watts to 250 watts, and my Vega 64, it was pretty much going between 120 to 320. So per day, I was getting up to two and a bit dollars on my Radeon 7, and the lowest I can get it is $1.4. My Vega 64 was getting me over a dollar and 74 cents at its minimum. Now, if we put this stuff over the year, you can see that Radeon 7 get you over 800 American dollars a year. And that's pretty damn crazy. Of course, 800 American dollars a year is over a thousand Australian dollars. So I'm rich as hell. But there's one thing you need to remember. Electricity costs money. So for me, it costs me 19 cents per kilowatt hour. So I divide that by a thousand and I times it by 24. So my cost per day when it's running at 250 watts is $1.14. That means I'm only getting a profit, which is still pretty damn good, okay, $390 when it's running at 250 watts. However, when it's running at 180 watts, I'm getting a profit of $350 because the price per watt is actually better when it's running at a lower power. So not only do you get to extend the life of your graphics card, but you also actually get a better profit margin. Now, when it's running at only 130 watts, the fans ramp right down and you're getting $300 a year. So to get the graphics card to run at its max speed, which will probably burn out the card a lot quicker, you're only getting an extra $90 a year. So it's a lot more power efficient to run it at its lower rate. And looking at the Vega 64, when you max that out, put that in overdrive plus 50% power, it drains 320 watts, which only gets you where well, you're actually losing money over here. You're losing over $100 a year just by running it. But if you run it in low power mode with 120 watts, you're making $70 a year. It's not much money, but with the price of Bitcoin going up and down and all that stuff, you could get lucky. But at the end of the day, it's a nice, fun learning experience. So just remember, get your kilowatt hours times by 24, divided by 1,000, that's your cost per watt, and then make sure you do the maths to make sure you don't end up burning money. And you know, this is just some basic stats for you to get your head around and jump into the game. Because I know when you look at mining calculators online, it gets a bit confusing. This is the dashboard that you get with NiceHash. As you can see, look, I got some, I got some Bitcoin there, that's crazy. I don't know how I earned that, that's crazy. They've recently transitioned to a new one, so I'll just quickly show you how to use that. You just click on Start Mining, and you sign up for an account, and then you click on Add New Rig, and you choose if you wanna set yourself up with an operating system or have an ASIC device. I use Nitash Miner. You click Download, that launches GitHub. Again, this is open source, so you can see all their code, which is really cool, look at all that. Um, source so you can compile it yourself it's a solution so that means it will load up in an application called visual studio and you can just clone it you can even download it as a zip but if you just want to run it 
you scroll down to the bottom and you select zip file there, extract it, and it just pretty much runs and downloads all the third party miners. And they do say that they use third party miners. And what that means is they're not open source. This application is, but the miners they use aren't open source. But you know, if anyone knows a better mining solution, please let me know. All right, hope you enjoyed that guide. And of course, my Bitcoin wallet is linked in the description below. Feel free to send me some coins. <laughs>